Hi, in this video let's discuss various extra oral radiographic projections. So coming to the first projection, lateral cephalometric also called as lateral ceph. So in lateral cephalometric, the patient positioning is in such a way that the film has to be parallel to the mid sagittal plane, right? As you can see in this image, this is a mid sagittal plane which has to be oriented parallel to the film, right? So that is the patient positioning and coming to the orientation of the central x-ray beam, it has to be perpendicular to the film. And and also it should be directed towards external auditory meters as you can see in this image this is the orientation of the patient where the mid sagittal plane of the patient should be parallel to the x-ray film and the central beam of x-ray should be projected perpendicular to the film directed towards external auditory meters right and this is a lateral self where you can clearly see the bones of skull as well as face including a soft tissue profile let me just zoom in so you can even notice a soft tissue profile evident in this lateral self and also we can see various cervical vertebrae and also alveolar process of bones as well as teeth right so the diagnostic relevance of this projection is it's used for assessing the facial growth and also it reveals soft tissue profile as it's evident on a lateral self and most importantly it's used for evaluating the bones of skull face alveolar bone and teeth in case of disease or trauma right so this is about lateral self so now let's move on to the next projection that is submental vertex view this submental vertex view also called as smv in this projection the patient orientation is in such a way that the canthomatal line is parallel to the film so what is this canthomatal line as you can see in this uh, illustration canthus is present near the orbit right we have an outer canthus and an inner canthus right so this is the outer canthus and the inner part is the inner canthus so the line joining a canthus of the eye to the meatus or external auditory meatus this imaginary line is called as canthomatal line it helps us in orienting the patient with respect to the film. So this canthomatal line has to be parallel to the film and the central beam of x-ray as discussed previously, no matter which the projection is, the central beam of x-ray is usually perpendicular to the film, right? And this central beam should be directed towards the vertex of skull or the highest point on the skull. So as it is evident in this image, the canthomatal line is parallel to the film and the central x-ray beam is oriented towards the vertex of the skull right and it is perpendicular to the film so this is a radiograph depicting submental vertex view where we can clearly visualize the base of the skull also the inferior border of mandible and these zygomatic arches right so this projection is called a submental vertex view as the name itself indicates submental vertex so we are trying to project an x-ray beam from the mental process of the alveolar bone or the mental process of the mandible towards the vertex of the skull so when you try to understand the term then it will be easy for us to visualize it so this is another radiograph projecting or depicting submental vertex view where the exposure has been reduced to one third so that there will be prominent zygomatic arches which are visible so this is called as jug handle appearance as it resembles the handles of a jug right so by reducing the exposure to one third we can clearly see the zygomatic arches so zygomatic arch fractures are clearly visualized in case of submental vertex projection so coming to the uses of this projection it's mainly used for evaluating or assessing the base of the skull as seen in the radiograph and also under exposed submental vertex view as i said when the exposure time has been decreased to one third we have something called as jug handle appearance because of prominence of zygomatic arches however when using this kind of projection it's contraindicated in patients with cervical spondylitis as we have to bend the patient excessively behind right so there can be trauma to the cervix cervical part of the vertebra so we need to be careful while dealing with patients suffering from cervical spondylitis and this projection is contraindicated in those patients right now coming on to the next view water's view 
or paranasal sinus view or occipitomental view. So as the name itself indicates, occipitomental. So we're trying to project an X-ray beam from the occipital part towards the mental process of the mandible, right? So it's called as occipitomental or paranasal sinus view as we can visualize most of the paranasal sinuses like maxillary sinus, frontal sinus, ethmoidal sinus, and also nasal cavities, etc. Right? So coming to the patient positioning in waters view, the canthometrial line is is oriented at 37 degrees with the film. So as you can see in this image, the canthometer line is oriented at 37 degrees compared to the long axis of the film. So that's the patient orientation. And coming to the orientation of central beam, it's perpendicular to film. And most importantly, it's focused towards maxillary sinus, right? That's important. So this is an illustration depicting water's view or paranasal sinus view, where you can see that the canthometer line is oriented at 37 degrees compared to the long axis of the film. And it's called as occipitomental view, as we're trying to project x-ray from the occipital part towards the mental process right that's important and coming to the radiograph so this let me just zoom in this is a radiograph depicting paranasal sinuses where you can see frontal sinuses maxillary sinus nasal cavities and also zygomatic prominences. So these are clearly visualized in case of paranasal sinus view or waters view. So coming to the uses of this projection, it's mainly used for evaluating zygoma fractures, paranasal sinus evaluation, and also evaluating nasal cavities. So coming to the next projection called as PSF or posterior anterior cephalometry, here the patient positioning is in such a way that the canthometer line is parallel to the floor. If this canthometer line is tilted at 10 degrees with respect to the long axis of the film, it's called as Caldwell projection. And this is mainly used for the cephalometric applications. And also we have another plane called as Frankfurt plane, which is perpendicular to film. We'll discuss that now. And as obvious, the central beam has to be oriented perpendicular to the film. So here in this image you can see that this is the long axis of the next ray beam which is perpendicular to film and coming to the patient positioning so the line which you can see here is nothing but Frankfurt plane. So this Frankfurt plane is nothing but a plane joining the upper margin of external auditory meters to lower margin of the orbit. This is called as Frankfurt plane. So this Frankfurt plane is perpendicular to the film and this canthometal plane which is present here can be slightly tilted at 10 degrees and this is called as Caldwell projection, right? Now coming to the radiograph, this is a PSF where you can clearly visualize the bones of skull and also most characteristically you can clearly visualize the coronoid process of mandible. So this PSF is the best projection for evaluating coronoid process of the mandible, right? This is very important. So coming to the uses of this projection, it's mainly used for examination of skull and also it's a best view for evaluating coronoid process, right? So coming to the next projection, reverse Towns projection. So here the patient positioning is in such a way that the canthometer line is in minus 30 degrees with filling. So the patient's head is tilted in such a way that this canthometer line makes a 30 degrees with a line which is perpendicular to this film right so this is a film and we have a perpendicular line so this canthometer line makes 30 degrees with this perpendicular line so this is the patient orientation in case of reverse town projection and the central beam has to be perpendicular to film and it should be directed towards the occipital bone right that's very important and this is a radiograph depicting reverse towns projection where you can clearly see the condyle. So this is a condyle. The condyle is not so clear. However, the subcondylar part is very clear, right? So this radiograph is mainly used for evaluating subcondylar fractures, right? So let me show you the opposite side. So this is a condyle and this is a subcondylar part, right? So the main advantage of this reverse town projection or this projection is mainly used for evaluating condylar neck fractures, right? That's very important. And now coming to other projections for evaluating mandibular body and mandibular ramus, we have lateral oblique projections for mandibular body and also we have lateral oblique projections for mandibular ramus. Now let's discuss them in detail. So coming to the first one, 
lateral oblique mandibular body here the patient is positioned in such a way that the head is tilted towards the side being examined if we have some issue with the right side of the mandible then that right side is tilted towards the x-ray film that's important in such a way that the mandible is protruded we should ask the patient to protrude the mandible and tilt the patient towards the side which is being examined right and the central beam has to be directed towards the first molar region this is very important because this varies with mandibular body and mandibular ramus in case of mandibular body projections it has to be oriented towards first molar region as you can see in this image or illustration the patient is head is being tilted towards the film and the central beam of x-ray is being directed towards the first molar region and the mandible of patient is protruded right so this is a radiograph which clearly depicts the premolar molar region of the mandible and also we can see coronoid process and also the ramus in this part of the projection and most importantly the lower border of mandible is clearly visible right so coming to this uh, uses of this projection it's mainly used for evaluating premolar molar region and also to evaluate the inferior border of mandible right so based on the radiographic appearance you can clearly clearly visualize and understand and remember the uses of that particular projection accordingly. And coming to the last projection that is lateral oblique for mandibular ramus, here also the patient head is tilted towards the side being examined with mandible protruded and the central beam of x-ray should be directed towards the center of ramus. In case of mandibular body it is first molar region, in case of mandibular ramus it is center of ramus, right? So this is the orientation of the patient where the head is being tilted with mandible being protruded and the central x-ray beam being directed towards the center of mandibular Ramus. And this is a projection or radiograph where you can clearly visualize the entire ramus part from the condyle to the angle. So this is the entire ramus part. We can also visualize the coronoid process and the base of the mandible. So this is lateral oblique projection for mandibular ramus. And the uses of this is to observe the distal regions or posterior third molar regions of maxilla as well as mandible and also to visualize ramus. So these are some of the extra oral radiographic projections. Now let's see various multiple choice questions pertaining to this topic. So coming to the first question, the best view to visualize zygomatic arches is jug handle view, occipitomental view, orthopantomograph, skull PA view, asked in previous Manipal 98. So the best view to visualize zygomatic arches is, so as we have discussed, submental vertex projection is mainly used to visualize the base of the skull and also the zygomatic arches. So to specifically visualize zygomatic arches, the exposure time has to be reduced to one third, which is called as jug handle view so in this we can clearly visualize zygomatic arch fractures right so the option here is a so coming to the next question panoramic radiograph is used to detect radiological abnormalities of all of the following except mandibular condyle maxillary anteriors mandibular teeth and occipital condyle so in a panoramic radiograph we can visualize mandibular condyle, maxillary anteriors, as well as mandibular teeth, except occipital condyles, right? So option D is appropriate answer. So coming to the next question, best radiograph for viewing fractures of maxillary bone. Option A, submental vertex. Option B, PA view. Option C, water's view. Option D, town's projection. So for all these options, water's view or occipital mental view or Paranasal sinus view is more appropriate as we can clearly visualize the maxilla as well as zygomatic process and the fractures can be evaluated readily. So the answer, appropriate answer here is water's view. So coming to the next question, the best radiographic view of temporomandibular joint is given by option A, transorbital view, option B, reverse town's view, option C, transpharyngeal view, option D, panorex. So for all these options, the best radiographic view for TMJ is obtained by transpharyngeal view, which is also called as infracranial view. So the projection which is mainly used for observing subcondylar fractures is reverse town's view but the best projection for observing the entire temporomandibular joint per se is transpharyngeal view also called as infracranial view right so coming to the next question the best radiograph to obtain a view of maxillary sinus so all sinuses can be visualized in water's view or paranasal sinus view or occipitomental view 
and the extra oral radiograph that best demonstrates the subcondylar portion of mandible is so it is reverse town's view so in reverse town's view as i have shown you in a radiograph the subcondylar fracture subcondylar part is clearly visualized on a radiograph submental vertex view is best useful in evaluating option a sinuses zygoma fractures mandibular fractures maxillary fractures if the option would have been zygomatic arch fractures then that would be the most appropriate option or answer here but here it's zygoma so this is not the appropriate answer whereas we have something called as mandibular fractures because if you can remember in submental vertex view we can clearly visualize the base of the skull and also the lower border of mandible so mandibular fractures as well as zygomatic arch fractures can be visualized in case of submental vertex view so the appropriate answer here is option c right and the best radiographic view for tmj is lateral oblique pa view waters view or the pantomograph so for all the options given so ideally for radiographic evaluation of TMJ as we have discussed previously it's transpharyngeal or infracranial however in the options given here the most appropriate option here is orthopantomograph even though it's not so clear so comparatively it's more appropriate answer because in other projections there is no chance that we can observe TMJ so the most appropriate answer here is orthopantomograph so coming to the next question, submental vertex view is useful in viewing the body of mandible, fracture of zygomatic arch, fracture of base of the skull, all the above. So the answer is obvious, all of the above. Zygoma fractures can be best viewed in occipitomental view, lateral oblique, towns, lateral skull. So zygoma fractures, maxillary fractures, as we have discussed in one of the MCQ, they are best viewed in case of paranasal sinus view or occipitomental view or waters view. So coming to the next question, waters projection is useful for evaluation of frontal and ethmoidal sinuses, zygomatic frontal suture and nasal cavity, maxillary sinuses, and all of the above. So the appropriate option here is option D. Come to the next question. Radiographic projection used to diagnose horizontally favorable and unfavorable fractures of mandible is. So for evaluating the ramus or body of mandible, the best available projection is lateral oblique. So mandibular body projection or lateral oblique, mandibular ramus projection. So for all the options here, lateral oblique view of mandible is more appropriate. Now coming to the next question. Best radiographic view for condylar and ramus fracture is Calwell view, Towns view, Reverse Towns view and Waters view. So in Reverse Towns view you can clearly visualize the condylar portion, subcondylar portion to be more specific and also the ramus of the mandible. So for all the options Reverse Towns view is more appropriate. So these are some of the multiple choice questions pertaining to extra oral radiographic projections. So once you try to understand the meaning of the term of that particular projection then it will be easy for you to visualize that projection and once you have the radiograph or that projection in your mind then you can clearly visualize what structures can be identified and accordingly you can answer various multiple choice questions right so hope it's clear thank you